Hi, so what we're going to do next is actually kind of interesting, or at least I think so. What I've got here is some go powder that I made. So there's a, quite a lot of go powder. I've got something like 20 grams of it kicking around, I think. And I made that as a result of lots of the tour methods that I've been showing you. And I've also got some um, copper oxide ink. Now, one of the interesting things about both of these two is apparently it's possible to photo reduce them. That is, if you flash them with a xenon light, the graphene oxide will be reduced back to graphene, and that's kind of really important for me because I want to do some in situ reduction of graphene oxide. And apparently the copper oxide gets reduced back to copper, which is extraordinarily interesting if you think about it, because we can paint with the copper oxide ink, flash it, and we're going to get copper lines. Or at least that's the theory, and that's what we're heading towards. Now, obviously, in order to do that, what I need is a high-power flash lamp. And a high power flash lamp is surprisingly not that easy to come across. But the bits to make it are quite easy to come across. What you need is one of these. This is a high power Xenon flash lamp bulb, 750 watts. And if we can drive that and make that flash across our graphene oxide, across our copper, copper oxide, we're an absolute winner. Now I got that from eBay actually, it came from Israel and I think it cost me £25. In order to get that to work, what I clearly need to do is build a driver circuit. Now, you can build a driver circuit if you want, and you can get all the components together and solder them all together and do the job very nicely. However, the same people who sell that, quite thankfully, sell this. And this is the driver board for it. It's all put together, it cost me £25, and it's ready to run that lamp. So, for £50, I got the complete setup in order to make a flash unit. Now, clearly, the only thing that I really need to do then is put it into some kind of enclosure, solder those bits together and solder on some um, wire to plug it into the mains. And that's what I'm going to do. So, I bought this, which is an instrument case. Now, the unit will fit quite nicely here, and the lamp will fit quite nicely there. So, I could make it as one whole unit by cutting a slot in the bottom putting an aluminium reflector on and then soldering the whole thing together. Or I could make it as two separate units, because this lamp, when it flashes, it actually gets really quite hot. Uh, so if you flash it a lot and often, then it's going to get hot in there, so we need to provide some kind of cooling and some kind of venting, or separate the two systems so that we've got the electronics in one case, the lamp in another, and we can move the lamp over the area that we're going to um, try exposing. So, those are the ideas that we're working with, and that's what I'm going to be doing now. Okay, so this is it put together, and you can see it's pretty simple. All I've done really is screw that board to the base plate of the box that I bought using some standoffs, drilled a few holes in the front cover to put the potentiometers through, and these potentiometers govern the rate at which it flashes and the intensity at which it flashes. And I've written on what they are, because you can guarantee when you close the box, you're not going to be able to remember it. Now this particular board will also take an external signal so you can actually flash it to um, an output from something else and you can also chain lots of these units together to create multiple units. So I've labelled this one up um, sync chain because if I can put an input in here or here, in fact it doesn't matter because they're wired in parallel, but if I put an input in here then it'll take that input and flash in accordance to the rate of that input apparently. If I have another box that I want to use the same input on I take from here into the other box and so on. Now, what you can see I've done inside is pretty simple. I've wired it up according to the circuit diagram, going to the mains and then to banana plugs. And this is the high voltage going here. And I've actually nicked a bit of high voltage wire from an old television uh, circuit I had kicking around. So we've got a nice isolation. It's got a good distance and a bit of isolation and insulation over there to high voltage. And then out the back of it, I'm going to lead that to the lamp and that to the high voltage trigger of the lamp. And clearly, um, I'm going to build the lamp as a separate unit, so we've got two more things to do to build the lamp and to make the cables to do the connection. Uh, this thing I bought um, just from Maplin's or Radio Shack actually. It's obviously a mains plug, but it's fused, so there's a fuse in there I can flip out and I can flip that off and on and put my kettle lead in there. So that's actually the whole unit finished now. Then all I have to do is put on the lid, screw it together. Once I've done that, I need to make a housing unit for the lamp. So here's the lamp unit made. Now before I show you how I made it, what I used to make it was this stuff. 
Now I've gone on about this before. This is called Builder's Board. It's a PVC clad polyurethane foam and you buy it in a whole range of widths and lengths and usually about £25 for uh, a five metre length but you can make loads of things out of it. And the good thing about it is you can saw it really easily, it cuts with a carpet knife really easily, sands beautifully, so it's really excellent stuff to work with. And you glue it with this stuff, which is cyanacrylic glue, and it glues so strongly that the glue bond is actually stronger than the material. And if you try to separate it, you in fact snap the material as opposed to snapping the glue bond. So it glues really easily as well. So all I did was cut out a couple of strips of the right width there to make the side and a top piece that I cut out there. Then I drilled those two sides out to slot the lamp in. The lamp's quite a tight fit, but you just have to pull those apart a little bit and then the lamp slots in. Now this is a reflector. I had a bit of aluminium and I cut some aluminium to the right size, cut a couple of holes in the top of it for the wires and bent it over and put it in as a reflector. Then all I did was take the wires from the lamp and lead them to these two banana plugs. So there's my whole voltage, which I've done with a nice red banana plug to tell me. And there's my two lamps. Now the two lamps are both black because it doesn't actually matter which way around the lamps attach. So I've got my um, lamp power and my high voltage trigger. Then what I did was cut a base plate for it, a back plate for it, and then all I have to do is screw that on. And there we go, that's my lamp unit finished. Now you notice there's a tiny gap under there, and I've left that gap so that when I get a piece of paper, the paper will slide under the unit so I can flash it and slide the thing up and down. So all we need now are some cables to connect these things. So that's the flash unit put together. We've got our high voltage cable, and I bought this high voltage cable from eBay, incidentally, it's proper high voltage cable, and put it into a red banana plug. And obviously I've got a red banana plug at the other end to plug into here. Now because these are banana plugs, they uh, stick out a little bit. So when it's actually turned on, you need to just be a little bit careful not to get anything too close to there, because there's obviously high voltage in there. You need to um, deal with that when it's turned off. Or <laughs> you'll only make that mistake once, I can assure you. If it was a, a sort of proper high voltage thing, they'd be sunk in a bit, but because I've made it with bits and pieces available to me, then it sticks out a little bit, and hey, I'll remember that, and if I don't, I'll be sorry I didn't, but I won't forget afterwards. And I put two black um, banana plugs here to tell me about the lamp, and um, it doesn't matter which way around they go for the lamp, so they're both black just to differentiate them from the high voltage. And then I've got a bit of this, which is some um, stranded uh, 1.5 millimeter wire put into the black banana plugs and then feeding into my lamp connections here. Uh, the lead I actually just scavenged. So this is just a scavenged lead that I got from an old computer and it's turned off at the moment. Now when I turn it on it'll begin to flash. It flashes quicker than you'll see it flashing because the camera has a little bit, a little bit of trouble picking it up. There you go. So you can see the flashing on me, reflected on me, and then every now and then you'll see the light at the bottom there as it flashes up. Um, as I say, that's only because the camera has a little bit of difficulty picking that up. But there is a Xenon flash unit all ready to go, sintering some um, nanoparticle inks or reducing some graphene oxide back to graphene. Anyway, I hope that was of interest to you, and thank you very much for watching.